Kidney Warriors. James here from Dad Vice TV, your online kidney health coach. And this is another episode of Dad Vice TV Live. Yes, if you are now watching us on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitch Live, you can enter comments and some of them, boom, it may pop on the screen just like that. Hey there, Loretta. Um, this week, we have a great topic, especially for those that are recently diagnosed, but it also applies to those of you who have been diagnosed. We're gonna talk about getting the most out of your doctor appointments. How can you prepare yourself so that when you go in there, you're getting the best treatment possible, you're not overlooking anything, you're not hearing things, and then forgetting them. Okay, we're gonna talk about all sorts of great stuff. Now you know who's with me, my favorite renal dietitian, Jen Hernandez. Hey Jen, how you doing? Hey James, hey everybody. I am so happy to be back. I mean, <laughs> my cheeks are already hurting from smiling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and for those of you that are brand new, my name is James. I was diagnosed stage five kidney failure. My lowest GFR was an eight. Spent time in the ICU. Got my GFR up to 13. Doctor said that's as good as you're going to get. You need to go on dialysis and get a transplant. If you don't, things aren't going to be looking good for you. But I worked with my doctors, with my healthcare team. I was proactive and I worked very closely with my renal dietitian, someone just like Jen. Whoops, she's right there. <laughs> my camera reverses. I got to remember which way to point. I worked with a renal dietitian. My GFR started improving. My kidney symptoms started decreasing. My anemia went away. My energy skyrocketed. Today, I am not stage five kidney failure. I'm not even stage four. I am stage three, absolutely no symptoms, feeling fantastic and loving life with kidney disease. Now there's no cure for kidney disease. My kidneys today are just as shot as they were when I had to spend a week in the ICU. But diet, nutrition, lifestyle changes helps me reduce the burden on my kidneys and we work together. We are buddies now, not fighting against each other. And my kidneys are keeping up with me much better to where you wouldn't even know I had any kidney problems. Now, Jen, for those that are new, you're over here. <laughs> Tell them a little bit about yourself. Sure. So I have been a renal dietitian uh, for, uh, I can't keep track of time. That's probably the first thing you should <laughs> learn about, about me. But I have been working in the renal world for the, really the majority of my dietetic career. I started in helping people on dialysis and really helping them take care of their nutrition needs with end stage kidney failure. And I realized the more that I learned about kidney nutrition, that there was a way to stop all of this from happening and to really delay or even prevent the need for dialysis. So I became much more interested researching more and more about kidney nutrition for earlier stages of kidney disease. And that's what I do now in my private practice. I do this full time helping with people across uh, the US for private work and then even across the world in my online course, Plant Powered Kidneys. And it has been such an honor and an amazing journey to be able to help so many people just like you with kidney issues stay off of dialysis. And I have loved every single minute of it, have been, it's been such a joy to help people with kidney disease. Yep, awesome. And if you guys have not joined Jen's Facebook group, Plant Powered Kidneys, you need to go over there as soon as you're done here, make a note, go and join it. First of all, it's free. Jen is an amazing renal dietitian, and a renal dietitian, in my opinion, is the number one key, the secret to living a great life, to enjoying food again with kidney disease. It's, you know, you could do it on your own, but let me tell you something, you don't wanna have to figure all this stuff out. You wanna work with a renal dietitian who's gonna make it easy and enjoyable. Are you afraid to eat a banana? Are you scared? to death of an avocado is an orange sound like a death sentence those don't need to be i eat all those matter of fact we're going to talk about snacks next week and i'm going to share some of my snacks 
there are snacks that I eat that you guys are gonna say like, what the heck? I thought those weren't allowed on my diet. But I understand now how much I can eat portion control and it has made it so much easier. So make sure if you do not belong to her Facebook group, go over there and join it. She does live videos. I think it's every Thursday or so. Mm -hmm. um, you're cooking. That's the best part of it because I can't cook. You guys know that. <laughs> I make one meal, stir fry. You can't stir mess fry. up. You can't mess up stir fry unless you leave it on there too long. That's the only way to mess it up. But I'm going to learn and I am writing down different things I want to learn to make. And it's so much easier for me to watch a video and learn. All right, so let's jump into today's topic. Oh, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, go ahead and click it. Go to YouTube after the video if you're not there and subscribe. We are about, oh, I think, 87,000 subscribers and growing. Wow. When we hit 100,000, YouTube sends me a little tiny silver plaque with a silver button on it. Look pretty cool back there on my wall. So let's make that happen as we kick kitty disease to the curb. All right. And that's my saying if you guys are brand new. I love saying that. <laughs> so let's kind of, I'm going to play a little bit of the, uh, um, the question asker guy. I'm going to pretend I don't know that much about getting started with kidney disease. I'm someone new. I just started hearing, uh-oh, there might be some kidney problems. I might need to go and see some doctor whose name I can't even pronounce called a nephrologist, also known as a kidney doctor or kidney specialist. Um, so what is a kidney specialist? So a kidney specialist, like you said, nephrologist uh, or, or a kidney doctor, a lot of different terms that people use when we think of the doctor or the, the medical professional that helps focus in on the kidneys is really that they are the person that is there to hone in on taking care of your kidneys. And we know from a lot of different experiences in our world that when somebody specializes in something very particular, they get to deep dive into more of the concerns and they become more knowledgeable about that area because they have the time and the focus and the capability to really learn what there is to know about that specialty. And that's what's really great about going to a specialist, like a kidney specialist, like a nephrologist, is that they're going to be able to give you more insight than your primary care. And usually uh, that's where the process starts. But it's the kidney specialist, the nephrologist is the person who goes through all the training, all of the years of schooling to become a doctor. And then they go through even more training and more years of schooling to become a nephrologist. Yep. Now, when should a person see a nephrologist or a kidney specialist? So really it's going to come from your primary care physician, from your family practitioner, your general doctor. They are looking at the big picture. So think of your uh, primary care physician as the conductor of the situation and they have all these people that they can kind of send out to you but it's really going to be um, their job to get you to that right person who dives deeper into a certain situation. So your primary doctor is gonna be looking at your, ki your kidney labs, which you talked about last week, at what to look for for your kidney labs. So things like your creatinine, your BUN, your GFR, if those are becoming out of range, and usually it takes a couple lab checks to confirm it. We can't just look at one. Remember, when we're talking about labs, mm -hmm. you don't just look at one and assume that's the situation. You have to look at trends. And the doctors are going to do the same thing. So they're going to look at an outlier. They're going to confirm that it is, in fact, the case. And then, ideally, they will send you to a kidney specialist or a nephrologist. So the other thing to think about, though, is... Uh, with the kidney specialist, there's also another type of doctor known as a urologist. And you might be referred to a urologist instead of a nephrologist or kidney specialist if you are experiencing kidney stones. And the urologist is the one who takes care of components of what the kidney does afterwards, right? So the kidney is filtering our blood and the waste goes into our urine. So if there's something going on from the urine pass point of the waste products, you might be referred to a urologist instead of a nephrologist. It really depends on your situation. But again, that's where your primary doctor is responsible for determining what the situation is and who is going to best take care of that situation for you. 
Yep. And when I remember when I was diagnosed or I had some problems, my doctor needed labs and he said, look, something's really seriously wrong. We need labs. I don't have time to wait to send them and get them back. You got to go to the hospital. I'm going to call ahead. You got you go there. They're going to be waiting for you. They're going to take your labs. I saw a nephrologist, endocrinologist, a urologist. Um, and there are probably other ologists that I oh, saw. Yeah. Um, what does an endocrinologist do since they are often working with kidney specialists? Yeah. So an endocrinologist is somebody who focuses on diabetes. So that might be the first step, even before seeing a nephrologist, if you have a history of diabetes or a poor blood sugar control, even again, if that A1C, one of the labs that we talked about, if that one's running out a little bit higher than normal, the doctor might send you to an endocrinologist first. And that's a really good step, even in taking care of your kidneys, because that is something that can impact your kidney health. So seeing an endocrinologist to have your blood sugars managed there is really, really helpful. Yep, and I know mine originally was uh, considered pre-diabetic, and which is you know borderline, means you're, you're mm -hmm. higher. Not quite diabetic, but you're on the path there. Today, normal. My A1C looks fantastic, all managed by diet. So I am so thankful for that. Now, when I go to see these doctors, okay, let's say, okay, now I know I do need my doc, my primary care physician told me, James, I want you to go see a nephrologist, a kidney specialist, because the beginning, none of us can pronounce nephrologist the first few times we hear it. it takes a <laughs> while for it to start coming off real easy. Um, what are some things I need to do to prepare for my visit to my nephrologist? Because there's not a lot of time. There, You're in, you're out. What can I do to prepare better? So one of the things I really, really recommend is you're basically going to see another person who's going to jump on and be a part of your medical team. So with that, I, you really need to have a current up-to-date list of all your medications, all of your supplements, everything you're taking, pill, packet, powder, form, whatever the case is. You need to have that written down, not only what it is, but the dosing as well, because there are medications that your nephrologist may pinpoint and say, we've got to change this because this is not safe for your kidneys. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be the ones who can also look at that. Sometimes primaries, your primary doctor might be able to look in that, to that as well, but nephrologists, again, they're hyper-focused on the kidney health. So that's something that they can look at. And if you bring that full list of medications and supplements, yep. I really can't stress that enough because we've talked about it before that having supplements is something, you know, it, you can take supplements and be okay with them, but you've got to let your doctor know what you're taking and also why you're taking it too. Yeah. The doctor's going to review all of this. So it's really important that you are totally transparent with everything you're doing on your side so that they can better serve you. Yeah, I, and I, I'm going to emphasize that every supplement, you're taking a baby aspirin every night before bed, let them know everything. You're taking some pill you bought off the internet thinking it's going to do something magical and it's not. Um, you got to let them know about that. Let them know when. You might even do the brand. I use an app, I can't remember what it's called on my phone, that tracks everything I take. And I use it to help me remind or remember when to take different things. But I have all the supplements in there, the dosage size, how often. And every time I visit a doctor, one of the first things they do is they go through the list. Here's what we know you're taking. Are you still taking these? What's new? So it's definitely really important to help your doctor. And be transparent. If mm. you're taking something... You know, there's some people out there that are using some um, herbal treatments that are legal in many states, maybe not in all. You need to let your doctor know that. They're not there mm -hmm. to get you in trouble. They're there to help you. And they need to know everything that you're taking or using and when. So make sure and be transparent. Um, they're there, you know, they're there to help you. It's, it's very easy. And I used to be this person. I used to go into the doctor, doctor, I'm having a little problem, a pain, blah, blah, blah. I didn't tell them everything. I wouldn't say, you know, when I stand up, I get dizzy. You know, I thought, ah, I don't need to tell them that. But by not giving them all the information, they're not going to be able to help me improve and prevent these issues or prevent further damage, especially to your kidneys. 
So definitely make sure and be transparent. Uh, now, what else besides a list of all my medications? So I got that. I make a list of everything I take, supplements, everything, dosages when I take it. What's the next thing I should have to prepare for that visit? Well, I think it's really awesome. And you're going to be probably ahead of the game to go into see your nephrologist for the first time. If you bring a track, a current history of your blood pressure, and if you have diabetes or blood sugar problems, your blood sugars as well, because you are going to really set the stage with this new nephrologist to say, I am here and I am ready to work and I'm ready to take care of my kidneys. And I know this is something I need to be mindful of. Mm -hmm. So by tracking your blood pressures, even for a few days, a week, something like that, leading up to your appointment, you're going to give the doctor, basically, it's like another idea of fresh labs, but from a different perspective. And it is just going to give the doctor so much more insight because you know, when you go to the doctor's office and the first thing they do once they call you back is they check your vitals. They get your height, your weight, they check your blood pressure. And a lot of people have uh, what's called white coat hypertension. Oh, which yes. Which means, right? You know what it is? I, that used to be me. It just, yeah. I didn't even have to see the white coat. I just had to know they're getting ready to come in the room. Blood oh, yeah. pressure shot up through the roof. Yep. So for those that, are, that don't know what we're talking about, it basically means this high blood pressure that you experience just because you're at a doctor's appointment, you're at a doctor's office and you get stressed. And a lot of people can relate to this because it's a stressful situation. You're scared about your results. You're scared about what they're going to tell you. You're scared about, you know, whatever's going on. So your blood pressure starts rising. That's why it's helpful to have a more current history because you're going to be able to show the doctor like, Hey, don't worry. Like, yes, it's a little high right now. I'm kind of freaking out, not going to lie, <laughs> but this is how it's been at home. So you can show, and then even if it is high at home, you're showing them more information and details so that they can better serve you. And that is just really, really helpful. Same thing for blood sugar checks. If you are logging your blood sugars in the morning, after you eat, before you go to bed, you're, you're going to give the doctor so much more feedback. And it's, again, it's just really helping to set the stage for when you go in and the doctor's going to be impressed. I'm telling you, your doctor's going to be like, wow, you came to play. Like, yep, this exactly. Is awesome. And I'll tell you guys, so I use, y'all know, I use home blood pressure monitors. I have two different ones. I have this one. Then I have one of the big old giant ones. Um, all these things track it in an app. So it's really easy for me to either email, especially in today's environment where I do a lot of phone calls to my doctors, my checkups are via the phone. I can email, boom, here's all my blood pressure. They asked me to take it in the morning, about an hour after I take my blood pressure meds, take it in the afternoon and take it in the evening before bed. And I just take it, boom, it's all in there. It gives them a lot more information. And my blood pressure is always, always higher when I'm in the doctor's office. And <laughs> can you guys guess what one thing at the doctor's office always gets my blood pressure up. You guys know what it is. There's one thing there, and I always beg them, doctor, please take my word. Don't make me use that device right there. What do you guys think it is? Let's give them a moment. So they I'm can curious. I don't think I know the answer. <laughs> oh, as, hmm. soon as, I, as soon as I tell you, you're gonna like, okay, I know. It makes sense. You've talked about it before. Okay, okay, I have an idea. There's yeah. one test. So I take my, I do my oxygen at home. Oh, there we go. We got it. We got it. Wait, the scales. Oh. Yes. I even use a Wi-Fi connected scale. My doctor mm -hmm. sees my weight anytime they want. And I get on it every single morning like clockwork. But I oh, just hate that, that scale there at the office. I take my shoes off. I take my watch off. Every little thing I can. Yeah. I'm like, if I could shave my hair any shorter, I'd do that too. <laughs> I tell you, there's something, there's that white coat hypertension. Maybe there's the white coat fluid gain or something because, <laughs> yeah, the scales always seem very mean. And I know I'm overweight. I tell them, I say, here's, here's what it is. And I, I tell them, I just weighed myself hours ago and all I've drank is water since then. So I'll say, yeah, here, here's what the number will be. And they're like, oh, you didn't gain weight or you didn't lose weight. So I know what's going to come. I just would like to not have to step on the scale and see it again. 
But I get that. My blood pressure is always up at the doctor's office. And yeah. sometimes it might be a bit high and they'll say, okay, let's just wait five minutes. Just sit here, relax, you know, listen yeah. to music on your headphones or something. <sighs> Take some deep breaths and then they'll check it again and it'll be okay. Uh, oh yeah, here's somebody says, I usually get a haircut before. There you go, Loretta. That, that's me. I'm in the, I, before, always before a doctor, I'm in the bathroom with my clippers, got my number five on. Yeah. Trim it down those little extra bits of hair. Just hoping. Hey, it all counts. Yeah. Maybe there's 30 pounds of hair there I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have Marlene saying she's got her first appointment on Thursday. That's great because now you're going to have all sorts of great information. So yeah. if you have a home blood pressure machine, Go ahead and take your blood pressure, track it in a notebook or in the app. I'm not a fan of going to the store and using those ones that everyone's been using because they're not calibrated. They're well known to be off by quite a bit. And right now with COVID, I don't want to be putting my arm in something like that. Yeah. All right. So I've got my history of my medications, all of them, what I take when, including all supplements. I've got my blood pressure information. Maybe I'm diabetic. I've got my my tracking of all my, my blood sugar results when I take it. So the doctor has a lot more information. The more information, the better. Mm -hmm. What else should I do to prepare? Well, kind of along both of those lines, I think it's really helpful to have a notebook or um, a three ring binder, something that you have everything collected in one space. And it could be a binder or a notebook that's really dedicated just to your kidney and mm -hmm. everything related to your kidneys. If you're seeing multiple doctors, it might be helpful, or you can have a binder that has everything in there. But when we're talking about having a list of your medications and having a track record of your blood pressures, and, and another thing that could be an option is a food log. I mean, that would be more for the dietitian, but if you're looking again at the whole team, everybody mm -hmm. that you're working with, we can talk about how all these things really connect. And if you have a notebook, if you have something that in, that really just is one place where you include all these details, it can help you feel more organized and prepared going into the appointment that you have that. And then when you are in your appointment, you'll be able to take notes. And when the doctor is talking about making a medication change, you can make a note on your medication list and write, mm -hmm. you know, change to this note on this date by this doctor. And you'll have all of that documented for yourself. And another thing about that too, just kind of a side thought, is uh, studies have shown that when we handwrite things, it sticks to our brains better. Exactly. So, yeah. So if you're writing down these recommendations, especially for like a new dose of a medication or a recommendation or something, when you're writing that, your brain is really letting it sink in better. So it's a great practice to have to utilize that um, that notebook and looking back. And then if you are ever get into like a little, you know, more of a heated conversation with your doctor, you can maybe look back and look at previous sessions, previous notes to say, okay, well, I remember we talked about this. I have this written down, you know, whatever the case is. So I, I think having a notebook like that where you can really keep things collected and tracked is really, really helpful. It doesn't have to be anything fancy or crazy, just like a regular, I'm trying to look, I don't have any composition notebooks yep. right here, but. I, I, so I have a small one here, but this is a small one just for you and I, so I can mm. write notes and stuff like that on there. Uh, I have some notes from before where we were talking about different words for search engine optimization <laughs> oh, yeah. to help people find the video that's written yeah. there. <laughs> but I actually have a big binder and what's really helpful for me with that is, and we're gonna talk about that in a few moments about how I really go super nerd once I'm in the appointment. I do all this as prep, um, but I can look back and see trends because we may, as kidney patients, we hear something. Okay, let's do this. We try it. Maybe it works. Maybe it holds us steady. Maybe it didn't work. I can now go back and say, okay, what did I do 30 days ago? What did I write down I was going to do? Did I do those? Yes. And now my labs are here. I can hopefully have the reason my labs didn't go the way I wanted them to go. Because it isn't always going to be up, up, up and perfect every time. Otherwise, kidney disease would be really simple. It is complex and it's unique for all of us. And my GFR, it's gone up, it's down, up, down. And the only reason after a down it goes up is because I had documentation. What did I do 
-hmm. And almost always it was something that my doctors or my renal dietitian said, don't do that, James. It won't help. But I tried it. It's usually something <laughs> like that. And then I stopped and we did what they said to do and things started improving. So it's going to help you when things don't go well to also be able to look back and say, what did we do? We did mm -hmm. that. Didn't work. What mm -hmm. can we try this time, doc? So let's, let's now um, move into, I, I'm prepped. I've got my book. I've got my log of my blood pressure, my blood sugar, my list of meds that I take. Now it is time, and this is where I super nerd out. Now my appointment's approaching. And the best thing f is to not make it a one-way conversation, everybody. Mm -hmm. The best thing you can do is ask questions. And we're going to talk about, we're going to have Jen tell us what questions we need to ask. But let me tell you guys how I do it. I'm not going to tell you what questions I ask, but I'm going to tell you how I ask them. I get my labs. They show up in an app. Hopefully, I do it at the hospital, and they show up like two hours later. I see all my labs. I start looking at them. I write down all my questions that I want to ask. Why did this go up? Why is my A1C this? What do I do to get it to this? You know, I'm looking at everything. My sodium. Why did my sodium go down? Why is it now at the bottom of average, what can I do to get it right to the perfect? I want it to be perfect, what can I do? I write all these questions down as I'm looking things up. And I may be looking like, oh, okay, I, I might Google some of them to try to find out, but Google is just Google. Anyone mm -hmm. can create content, so you can't trust it. It's not guaranteed to come from a doctor and be accurate, and we're all different too. So I might Google a little bit and say, hmm, does this mean I should have more fiber? Perhaps I might write that as a question because I found on Google, a bunch of sites talk about fiber can help here on a certain lab that's now out of whack. I then type all those up and my doctors all allow me to email my questions before the visit. So I type those up and I email them to the doctor about two days before the visit. And I'll print it out with a big gap. That's a question and a big gap. Question, a big gap. And I bring that in and we go question by question and I write their answers to everyone. So then I have every question I had asked. Uh, I didn't miss any of them. And then any that popped up, I write those in the back. Oh, write that question. And what do you say, doc? And I ask why constantly. That's the one word. I sound like a little tiny kid. Why? <laughs> They'll be like, okay, your sodium's low. Why? Well, you're not mm -hmm. getting enough in your diet. Why? Well, look, here's your food. You cut back too much. You know, how do I get it back up? Well, I ask those questions. Um, and, my, and my question always is, how do I get that back up to normal by our next visit? That's what I want to know. May not be possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My, my, my creatinine, it's never going to be perfect. But let's aim for perfect and we'll see how close we get. Um, you know, if it stabilizes, that's great. Fantastic. Stabilizes mm -hmm. is good. All right, so let's talk about questions, especially for those that are brand new. It's their first visit to mm -hmm. their kidney specialist, their, their kidney doctor, their nephrologist. What questions should they make sure they ask? Well, it's really important in my perspective uh, to ask what caused my kidney issues. You need to find out what happened, what why am I here? I mean, you know you're here because of a kidney problem, but why? Why am I, what happened? So identifying what caused your kidney disease, your kidney problems is a really important starting point because I tell my clients all the time, we're going to focus on the root cause of your kidney issues. What that means is we need to know what caused them. And it can be complicated. It can be challenging to figure that out, especially when so many people have a lot of different issues going on. We know high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, certain testing can cause kidney issues, uh, kidney stone. Like there are so many different factors that can cause kidney disease and you need to know or at least get the best idea from your doctor about what caused this to happen, because that's really what you want to start focusing on to take care of your kidneys is what caused it. So once you figure out the cause, then you can start moving into more of the idea of 
creating a plan for yourself and knowing, okay, this is because this is the case. This is what I need to take care of. Yeah. And when I was first diagnosed, I was so eager to jump so far past all that. I was like, okay, I need to, I need to know this. Give me all this now. I'm going to, I'm going to fix this. Just tell me what to do. I was so eager to get there, but we have to know the cause so that we can stop further damage. If the cause is diabetes, we know, okay, we need to get our diabetes under control because that's causing damage. And if we don't, we're just going to continue to get more damage. And those changes we make to diet, they're not going to be as impactful as they could be. Same thing with blood mm -hmm. pressure. If it's your blood pressure is out of control, which is so common because your kidneys are the ones that keep your blood pressure under control. So as they get damaged, blood pressure gets out of control. That can cause more damage or accelerate existing damage. Also, now you're even more out of control. So we got to stop further damage by knowing what the cause is. Now, the cause may also be something that we really can't control as directly as something like blood pressure. Could be some genetics and things like that. But we need to know so we can make better decisions with our plan to better manage the underlying cause. So that is so important. And a lot of times when people reach out to me and they, they'll ask some questions, and I can't give medical advice or anything like that, but they may ask some questions. I ask them, what's the underlying cause? And do you have that under control? Are you managing that? And then usually the next question is, are you working with a renal dietitian? <laughs> I mean, I'll say too, from a renal dietitian perspective, there is no one size fits all type of diet, even for kidney disease. Uh, and, and that's where we look at the root cause and determine what's a, the best kind of diet. And it can be very different for all different situations, but I won't be doing my job very well for you if you don't know what's going on with your kidneys and you know, that, that just really makes such a huge impact on the nutrition, speaking from the dietetic, the nutrition side of things, it makes a huge difference on how we approach taking care of your kidneys because we can address what's going on there and the nutrition plan is gonna to be totally different. So it's really important to know that starting point. Yep, and, and Debbie had mentioned, James, you're lucky you got doctors that'll take questions via email. Um, actually, all of my doctors will all take my questions via email. Some of them, the endocrinologist did not at the beginning, but once they saw <clears throat> that I come in with questions and that everything they say, I'm taking notes. If it's important, I'm writing it down. They knew this guy wants to get better. So if mm -hmm. I give him a little extra time, it's good. He's going to use mm -hmm. this. He's going to listen to me. So many doctors, you know, they, they get patients in there. They talk to them. The patients, you know, there's a nodding. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They're not sure how much they really understand and are they going to go home, remember that, and implement what they said. Mm -hmm. When they see that right. you're vested in, in it, you're taking a proactive role in your health care, they're more willing. So reach out. If you have any doctors, let them know, hey, look, I'm, I really want to get better. Is it possible before the appointments for me to send you the questions that I want to ask that we're going to cover during the appointment. It's it's all good for them. They may not answer them via email, but now they at least have them and they can be prepared for your appointment. Otherwise, I'm sitting there and I'm asking my questions and they're like, uh, James, time's up. I'm like, no, 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 don't worry. I only have three more pages of questions. Okay, let's get through it. <laughs> I'm sitting in the chair. You're not going to lift me out. Remember, I'm afraid of the scale. You're not lifting me out. Let's get through my questions. <laughs> now, um, what? So now I've asked him about the cause. What caused mm -hmm. my kidney disease? What's the next question I should ask that I need to know, especially as a new person? Well, you definitely want to find out what stage you're in. And we can look up this information online. There's a lot of different things from the National Kidney Foundation that will give you that guideline. But you really want to hear it from your doctor for that official diagnosis. Again, we're not self-diagnosing. We're not going to try to assume mm -hmm. we you know, can, can look at this and know exactly what's going on. So get that right from your doctor to find out exactly what stage you're in. I mean, it's really helpful when you start to connect with other people to kind of have a, an idea of people in a similar situation, stage three and stage three, 
Or if you hear somebody in your stage four years and you find out someone's stage two and you know, okay, they're in a different situation. Even I'll say stage three to stage three is still very, very different, but it kind of helps you start to get a feel for the kidney community. And really it's, it's a, it's one of the most, I would say common questions. And James, you'll probably mm -hmm. have more insight to this than, than me. So uh, more so, but I feel like that's one of the first things that even people talk about when they jump into a Facebook group or they talk about oh, yeah. people kidney issues. <clears throat> that's the first thing. What stage are you? Yeah. That's kind of the first thing they need to know. And, and, those of you who have listened to me long enough, um, I really don't like the stages because you could be at one end or the other, and it's a huge difference. Um, mm -hmm. I like to focus on the symptoms. What mm -hmm. symptoms do you have? Uh, but that stage helps you kind of determine roughly where you fall on the spectrum of kidney damage. And there are certain things that are typical at stage four, typical at stage five, typical at stage three, and it can help you kind of understand, is this normal? Um, mm -hmm. If you're stage two and you think your kidneys hurt, well, chances are that's not your kidneys hurting, that's something else, uh, or you might not be stage two. You know, they need to look at that. That's not traditionally a, an issue that happens at stage two. But everyone on the, on the social media groups, uh, it's always, what stage are you? And then that's followed by, what's your GFR, which is mm -hmm. your glomerular filtration rate, an estimate, just an estimate, everybody, of how well your kidneys are filtering. And it's they're measuring how well does it remove something. Usually it's creatinine. Um, it's a muscle breakdown waste that your kidneys remove. GFR is not a measurement of damage. So my GFR originally was eight, which is very bad. Um, I had practically every symptom you guys can imagine, all of them, all the bad ones, I had all of them. My kidneys are no, are not healed. They're the same. They're still shriveled. They're still scarred. And today my GFR, my last GFR was 33. So the GFR is not how damaged your kidneys are. It's how well they're filtering. And that's what kind of places you in the stage. A GFR of 30 to 45 is stage three. So I'm just barely whoop, made it into stage three, but more importantly to me, no symptoms. That's oh, yeah. my energy's back. I feel like a, an amazing person. I'm actually healthier than I have been in so long because now I'm eating right. And I've learned that exercise is not going to kill me. <laughs> now, so I found out I'm going to ask them the cause so I can manage it, stop further damage what stage I'm in, I now, I now know where I, I fall on the spectrum of kidney disease. Um, what's the next question I should be asking them? So I think it's a good time in that intro and figuring out what's really going, what's really going on with your kidneys to find out if you need to have any other kind of testing because there are certain types of autoimmune or genetic kidney issues that can be confirmed with some further testing. Your nephrologist is going to give you an idea of what is necessary and what's not necessary. Some people feel like a kidney biopsy, like, oh, I need to, I know that, you know, so-and-so said they had their kidneys biopsied, so I need to get that. That may or may not be necessary, and your doctor is not going to put you through something that's unnecessary or potentially more damaging to your kidneys, too. So um, you can ask them if there's any other testing that should be done, especially if you go back to that first question. And mm -hmm. if they're saying they're not sure, then it's really good to say, okay, well, then what kind of testing do we need to do to figure out what's causing this? Uh, so that is something that you should just kind of check to see if, you know, the future plans of the of what else is going on. Again, the more you understand what's causing your kidney issues, the better you can take care of your kidneys and take care of your health and know what you can control and what you can do. Yep. So that's something that you should definitely check. And I would encourage everyone always get a copy of the results from your tests. Um, mm -hmm. It's pretty easy with labs. They can print you off one or now a lot of them are, it's in an app that you can download, have all your, your, your labs there. I super nerd again, take my results and I throw them in Excel and I start doing all sorts of trending analysis. Uh, <laughs> I swore I could find things that, that like, oh, how much per pound, how much of my creatinine is that gonna impact? I went to that level trying to figure mm -hmm. it out. Of course, my doctor says no, but you need to lose weight. It's better for your heart. It's better for your blood pressure. It's better overall. 
<laughs> but I was looking for all those little correlations. Can I find them? But it's great. Get a copy. Now, if you get an ultrasound, someone asks, hey, I got an ultrasound. Will my doctors give me a copy of that? Usually they don't, but if you ask for one, you can. For mine, I actually asked for a copy of everything and they sent me CDs and I had to pay mm. like maybe $10 I paid, included shipping. And they got all my records from the ER, all my records, every test, every ultrasound. And they did a lot of ultrasounds, all those from a full week in the ICU, all that on one CD. And then I just copied it to my computer and put it up on the cloud. It wasn't that expensive, but it's not it's not the um, the norm for them to say, hey, here's a copy of your ultrasound. Have a yeah. great day. We'll see you later. But ask for it. Mm -hmm. you know, never hurts any testing. You get, and then if you have further testing, if they say, yeah, you're going to do this, great to find out, do I need to fast? Any any prep I need to do for those. And when you mentioned the, the biopsy, um, I never had a kidney biopsy. They wanted to originally. And I said, will it, what, what does it mean, the results when you get it? Mm -hmm. What will it change? Because there is some risk. And they were talking to me about risk of doing it with me. And it was up to me. Do you want to do it or not? They would like to. And it would not have made any difference in my treatment. They had a very good idea of what the cause was. They just didn't like the way my kidneys looked on the ultrasounds. Uh, but I did not do a biopsy. And if they would have told me it's going to impact your treatment, we it's going to give us information that will make a difference, then I would mm -hmm. have said, yeah, let's do it. But after the conversation, there was some risk with it with in my situation, and it wouldn't have made a difference in my treatment strategies. Yeah. I said, ah, let's just not do it. Let's just keep going up and keep going with it. Um, now, what is, so we've asked the question about other tests. What's the next question we should always make sure we're asking, especially those new patients? Yeah. So this is going to go back to that preparation now. So you brought in your notebook and your medications. You want to go through your medications and make sure you know exactly why you're taking each of these medications, especially the ones related to your kidney disease. Even if there's a medication that you're unsure about, you can ask your doctor, your, your kidney doctor, your kidney specialist, and they can say, oh, that is something for your primary doctor to oversee, or that is something for your endocrinologist to oversee. So they might just direct you to a different person, mm -hmm. but you're still going to have that breadcrumb going in the right direction of understanding it. And I am just a huge advocate for you knowing exactly what your medication does, because too many times, way too many times in dialysis, especially I would meet a new person starting dialysis and we'd go through the medications and they would say, Oh, I've lost track. I have no idea how many I'm taking. I'm just, Ooh. you know, feel like I'm taking pills all day. And they didn't know. And I would ask about, okay, what about this medication? What does this do for you? Oh, I don't know. It's, that's not helping you because you're going through the motions. And when changes happen, when you make changes, when you want to make changes, mm -hmm. if you don't know what you're taking your medication for, you might not be connecting certain dots. Like when I talk with my clients about watching their sodium and going plant-based, I tell them you are probably going to have lower blood pressure. So you're going to want to tell your doctor, you're going to want to track your blood pressure medications and your blood pressure. This stuff really all connects. So yep. it's important that you're aware of all of this. And that starts with being really clear with your doctor and finding out why you're taking every single medication. You can also ask them like, what about side effects? Or are there any common side effects I should be aware of, especially with a new medication? It's probably, probably not going to be a big factor for medications you've been on for a long time. But especially when you start a new medication, what side effects should I be looking for? Yep. And I'll tell you that why is such an important question right here. So mm -hmm. I always ask, and, and my, my primary care physician, He's an amazing guy. I absolutely love that I found him and work with him. Um, every prescription, any new medication, he explains why I'm taking it. And he tries to find an exit plan. We are taking this, um, this one, my blood pressure medicine. You're going to take it as long as your blood pressure is not controlled you know, naturally by your body. Um, and he may say, you're going to take this most likely for the rest of your life. Uh, so I know not only why, but kind of, is this a 
30 day thing? Is this something I'm taking temporarily until something gets improved? What's mm -hmm. going to happen to get me off of that pill? And he, and he told me my blood pressure, if you lose weight, you, you'll become more active, you get healthier, we may reduce your blood pressure pill. So now I have an incentive to not only take the pills as prescribed and consistently, but to maybe even exercise a little bit better, lose some more weight, you know, that thing I hate, that scale, um, mm -hmm. so that maybe I can reduce the amount of pills I take. And when I was first diagnosed, that very beginning, I, I had everything wrong. My hemoglobins were so bad. My red blood cell count was bad. Everything was so bad. Sleeping at night was difficult. I, I felt like I was eating at a buffet of pills mm. for the first few weeks. But I knew what every pill was for, and Good. many of them, they were, take this for a week, take this one, we're going to watch this, this result in your lab. When it gets back closer to normal, we're going to stop that pill. It's not forever. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think it's really important to not only know why you're taking it, but when you need to stop. Because sometimes you might be taking one that you don't need to take anymore, and it's just you've been taking it as a habit and just going in and refilling the prescription. Um, and maybe your nephrologist doesn't realize because maybe you forgot to tell him, yeah, I'm taking that one. My primary care refills it for me. I had a lot of that in the beginning. It was so confusing because I, I, I went to one uh, to Target and got all my nephrologist prescriptions filled. It was right across the street from the hospital. So I'm like, I'm just calling there. I'm mm -hmm. going to drive over to Target. I have anemia. I can barely walk. I'm so tired. I'll get it there, but then I had my other prescriptions at Walgreens that my normal doctor was giving, and I had to, I, f I forgot in the beginning, I gotta tell everyone so that we know any interaction, stop this. And I actually was taking too many blood pressure pills originally, because I kept taking some of my old ones, not realizing, oh, these replace that. So that goes back to that why. Why am I taking these? Yeah. And just making a note of that. Right, right. Okay, let's see. What else do I have? I'm going through some questions that are common. Um, after I've asked about taking the medications, I understand why and a bit more about it. What's the next question I should ask? Uh, I think another really important thing, and this is, again, going to show how you are looking to be, uh, I use the term star student a lot with my clients, and um, when you want to be that active patient and you want to be the best patient and you want the nephrologist to be like, wow, this is an amazing guy or girl. I, I am just so thrilled that I get to help them with their kidneys, kind of like how I am with my clients. Um, it's really great if you take initiative and ask, what should I be tracking on my own? And, and when should I be doing this? How often should I be doing this? You're basically asking your kidney specialist for homework, mm -hmm. but what this shows is that you are there, you are committed and you want to do everything in your power to, I mean, for one, be tracking things, but also make sure that you're tracking things that you should be tracking, not, not just doing it just to do it. So it's really helpful to get that insight from the doctor and know exactly what it is you should be focusing on. So it might be something like the doctor wants you to check your blood pressure, wants you to keep, wants you to check your blood sugars, even tracking your weight more frequently. James, like you said, you were doing, and, and then also medications. Maybe the doctor says, I want to make sure you're taking your medications at X time for this many days or until the next appointment or whatever the case is. But again, make those notes in that notebook so that you know exactly what your homework is and what you should be focusing on between then and the next session. And that's going to go really far for you in your care. Yep, very, very good. Um, I had something and I forgot what it was I was gonna say. Oh, I, I, I'm i a nerd. I tracked everything in the beginning. Um, I was tracking things that really meant nothing. And now I just track a handful of things myself. Um, but I get some pleasure out of it looking and I make notes in my Excel spreadsheet. Like this month I started doing this. When did, and it took me a long time to move away from a heavy animal protein diet, for example. All that is in there. There was a time when I tried keto, like the normal keto that you see from watching people on YouTube. The doctor mm -hmm. told me not to. He said my GFR would go down. I did it, GFR went down. But I also had notes in there, what I was doing and tracking all that. So I knew, okay, that's why. And my healthcare team was really big on using 
a food tracker to track what mm -hmm. I was eating because there are certain parts of your lab, especially your BUN, things like that, that you can so easily impact with diet. And if it's getting out of whack, they could quickly say, oh, look, okay, <laughs> I'm going to use a bad example. Your 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 sandwiches from Popeyes. Okay, I think that's why your sodium skyrocketing. Now. <laughs> Let me think. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're getting a few of those every week. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> but they wanted me to track what I ate, and I used an, an app for that. And then when I started seeing a nutritionist, a renal dietitian, she just loved me. She's like, "Holy cow, this is fantastic!" Now I see oh, yeah. how you eat, when you eat, the kinds of foods you you like, because it's all in there. And her first approach was, let's make a few tweaks, not give it all up. She made yeah. it very easy to transition to where now I still eat meat, but I eat far, far less of it. And for all of you that have been listening to me last week, no, I never got my ribeye that I wanted. <laughs> I, uh. the, the craving has passed. I'm not even craving it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I kept thinking, I'm gonna get me a ribeye and treat myself. <laughs> yeah, it was a meal. No, it passed. Never got it. A few people were asking, did you ever get it? No, no. Uh, but that was really good. I tracked that stuff. And I found it it not only helpful for those that I worked with, but also for me mm -hmm. to see progress. And when mm -hmm. sometimes things don't go well, and I, I want to make sure everyone understands that. I don't want them to think, oh, James is GFR8. He made a couple changes. And boom, it all shot up. No, there were there were ups and downs and scary things all along the way. It's, it is a journey. You're climbing a mountain yeah. up and down. Uh, but when it did go down, I was able to look and see what probably caused that. So then I could ask my doctor in the next visit about it or set up a, a phone call. There were several times where I didn't want to, I was just too tired. I couldn't get in the car and really felt like driving to doctor's appointment. So we'd set up a, a virtual appointment. My doctors all do those. But you got to set them up well in advance. And we just get on the phone and we talk through it. I had my blood pressure at home, um, all the other things that I track at home, and it just made it so much easier with them. All right, the next question, what should I ask? So now I, I'm, I'm tracking some things. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I know what my next question would be. And this is a question people ask all the time. Mm -hmm. How often? Should I get my labs? Mm. Yeah, that is such a good question because you really, I mean, you're doing all this work, you're putting in all this energy, all this effort to take care of yourself and the labs are the results of that work. So you definitely want to find out what your lab schedule is going to look like. And that's going to be really individualized. Again, it's going to be mm -hmm. based off of the kidney specialist or the nephrologist um, order, what they feel is capable, what they're capable of tracking for you. Sometimes there's some health insurance regulations there. So there's that part of the equation to consider. And it also, that kind of also goes back to the different stages. So earlier stages of CKD don't typically get very frequent. And when I say frequent, I mean, we'll talk about frequent, but for, for early, early stages, it's maybe every six months. Mm -hmm. because they're not seen as an acute situation. It's not, you know, we're not looking at dialysis right now. So about six months is fairly normal for people in earlier stages. And then if the, your kidney disease progresses and you have later stage four, stage five, that can become every three months, even every month, sometimes twice a month, depending on your situation. So it's different for everybody. Um, but you really want to get a feel for how often you're going to get those done. And you can always ask, James, I know mm -hmm. you ask. How oh, yeah. frequently can I get mine drawn? Exactly. And and in the beginning, just kind of give people an idea. In the beginning, when I was in the in the ICU, my labs were done multiple times a day in the beginning. Yeah. First of all, they had to get so much stuff under control. Mm -hmm. um, my food, I think it probably came through the bags that were connected to me. It, it felt like I don't remember eating in the beginning. Also, I didn't feel like it. Um, but they were doing them multiple times a day. That first week out of the hospital, GFR 13, the doctor, you know, we made an agreement. If I got to 10, I'm going on dialysis, but give me a chance. Give me some time. Mm -hmm. And I had my labs taken every day to see how I was doing. And then it went to weekly, every other week. And now 
I'm overdue because of COVID, I am overdue. It's my last labs were back in uh, January, uh, January 4th. And then I had some other ones done around January 15th and my, my GFR was 33 there. So I need to go get some. Now I have something amazing here. Holy cow, and I wanna pop this up there. I wanna thank somebody. Hold on, let me get another. Thank you so much. This is actually, for those who don't know, this is the very first super chat that I've ever had. This is on YouTube where people can say, oh, you can, you're doing a great job and they can help support Dead Vice TV. And she oh, said- Oh, that's wonderful. She said, her, her, the, the, the quote was, uh, this talk has been awesome. Lots of useful information. So happy. You are the very first super chat ever, which is absolutely awesome. <laughs> that is so great. That is really good. I'm so yeah. happy that people are finding this helpful. <laughs> and then we have a few other people in here. Uh, Nala's going every six weeks. Shelly's saying her doctor does it every four months. So there is no right or wrong. Yeah. Well, well, actually, let's see. There is no exact right answer for everyone. Not getting labs is the wrong answer. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you're, you know, been stable for a long time, your doctor may say every six months or maybe every year. Um, I don't like that every year. I need to go mm -hmm. get mine. I actually don't like that it's been now over six months since I've had them. Um, but I feel great. I understand my diet. I'm mm -hmm. sticking to it. Um, the information that we exchange here is helpful. I feel very good, and I feel that I'm either stable or still improving. I yeah. I'm. I would be shocked if my GFR, besides the normal fluctuation it does, if right. it dropped, I would be completely shocked because I do not have a single symptom. And believe me, if I ever get a symptom, I'm gonna know it right away because I will no longer overlook those things. Yeah. All righty. So. We're gonna ask about how often to get the labs drawn. Uh, it's good to ask them, what should I track on the labs? Cause the labs yeah. cover so much. We talked about that last week. Mm -hmm. There's so many different things that are on the labs and they're, they may not all be what you wanna focus on. Mm -hmm. um, I focus, I of course I look at my creatinine. I look at my GFR, you know, wanna know mm -hmm. where am I? Come on, let's see it go up, come on, let's go. Uh, I look at my creatinine, because if that goes down, the GFR goes up the calculation, except I had a birthday once in between some labs, and it was a bad birthday. It's one of those ones, every so often, every so many years, the formula gets impacted by your birthday. And I ran them one year younger, and my GFR was higher, but at my current age, I actually went down, I'm like, oh, it cost me mm, two points. Because, yeah, age is part of that calculation. <laughs> yeah. And it's yeah. not age like your real age. It's your years. <laughs> Being something point nine years old, it's, you know, you, you kind of, anyway, you know, it got me. It was one of those ones where it got me. Um, I forgot where I was going. Oh, but I track my BUN. I'm very involved in my BUN. Yeah. I want to look at my pH. Um, how am I doing with acid and you know the base, my blood, how am I doing? And a mm -hmm. few other things that are important to me that I know maybe I can impact them with my diet and it mm -hmm. helps me focus on those and make changes. My doctors focus on everything. They're looking at all the other right. things, but there's some things that I really can't impact. So I don't focus on those and worry about those. Yeah. And originally my focus was get everything within the standard range. Not too high, not too low. It took a while, eventually we got there, and then we worked on getting things as close to the middle as standard range. And now, my last last line, everything was green, except creatinine, it was, it was high, um, mm -hmm. it was 2.25, and my BUN, which was 28. Those were the only two oh. that were not green. Yeah, a 28 is like practically yeah. normal, it's like yeah. Yay! Yeah, Good thing I didn't great. need a ribeye right before that. My BUM would oh, have been up there. Oh my gosh, shot up. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, well, like you said before too, James, that you, when you first started tracking, you were tracking everything oh. and that can be really overwhelming. So when you ask, what should I track? It really helps the doctor and you talk about like, kind of getting laser focused on what you can take care of. And then that way you don't have to worry about some of the other things 
The doctor's there to take care of a lot of that for you. So the doctor's going to be able to tell you, okay, this is a, I, you know, I want you to, to keep tracking your glucose because of your blood sugars. I want you to track your BUN because of your protein. I want you to track uh, your potassium because your potassium's mm -hmm. been running high. Things like that. I think that is where you can really kind of identify some of the primary concerns that the doctor also has in, in what they're really focused on taking care of for you. Yep. And then after asking, um, about what I should track. What's the next question? I know what you're gonna say. This is my favorite question <laughs> of all that enough of us do not ask and we need to ask. Yeah, uh, totally biased, first of all. Can I, can I put that disclaimer? <laughs> <laughs> you don't need a disclaimer. This is one of the most important questions. Okay, so this, this important question that you need to ask is, will you refer me to a renal dietitian? And I know right away, because I can hear all of you, you, whether you're chatting it, talking, whatever, texting it, I know you're going to say, well, my doctor said, no, I don't need a dietitian until dialysis. I even had this, this exact conversation today. This is not true, okay? Oh. And I need you to become your advocate in your healthcare and argue that it is important, mm -hmm. okay? It's important if it's important to you, all yep. right? There's no benefit in seeing a dietitian if you don't care about making diet changes, if you don't care about making any corrections here or looking at the nutrition side of things. But if you want to focus on nutrition, you've got to have a dietitian on board, okay? And even if the doctor says no for whatever reason, I mean, you could report them technically. I'm not saying that too loud, am I? But you, <laughs> you, you could say they're blocking my care, mm -hmm. okay? But – Hopefully they'll give you some resources if they don't give you resources. I mean, they're not, they're not terrible doctors. They just don't know the world of nutrition. They're not used to seeing us dietitians outside of dialysis. So I hear people say, Oh, when you go to dialysis, you'll have a dietitian. It's like, well, well aren't we kind of past the point then? Yeah, like, exactly. Let's talk about making changes now. So they just don't know that we exist. We're the unicorns of the nephrology world apparently. So be your own advocate. Um, you guys know that I have resources on my website and I've talked about different places that you can go look up and find a dietitian. and I'll make sure that we include some of those uh, notes for you guys here today yep. so that you can go look up a dietitian, whether it's in the United States or it's in whatever country that you are in. Remember, there's laws, licensure, legality situations when it comes to working with dietitians. So if you want to see a private dietitian to help you with your labs and your results, you've got to see a dietitian that you can work with. And checking your country's, first of all, your country and then your state or your local area for a dietitian is a good first step. Okay. And yes, a renal dietitian is really hard to find. Even going through your health insurance and getting a, di a dietitian in your health insurance network, I mean, it's a place to start. And you guys already have James and I here to help provide some kidney nutrition and, and health education for you that you can take to your own dietitian and say, well, I learned about this. Can, can I talk more with you about potassium from a plant-based diet? Something like that. Yeah, but and, and Coffee Time really, actually even said their dietitian discovered that their doctor had not been taking, checking their phosphorus levels for a long time. So there's yes. so many reasons besides just, it's a second set of eyes looking at, mm -hmm. at, at what's happening. Um, and they're going to help you find yeah. food. And I want to add, getting the referral, your doctor, your, you know, your primary care physician or your the nephrologist, they should be able to find a reason to get you that referral and do it. So hopefully it is covered by your insurance. Uh, mm -hmm. Mine was, I was obese, was pre-diabetic. There's plenty of reasons there to get me to a dietitian covered by my insurance. So it, it didn't cost me anything except my my out of pocket per visit fees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think I I even though I don't personally take insurance, um, I I still feel that even using your insurance is something really really helpful. I provide my clients with a super bill, which is like a receipt that they can give to their insurance for reimbursement. Yeah. Uh, but but you know use what you have, see who you want to see, and. Um, yeah, I can't say enough of it, how important it is. And when your doctor says nutrition is not important when you're in stage three, you can flat out call them a liar and tell them that I exactly. said that they're a liar because that is not the case at all. And there are so many people like in our Facebook group 
Mm -hmm. And in our course, that would tell you, that would be on my side arguing the same thing, that no, food, nutrition makes all the difference right now. Every yep. single stage. <laughs> we have some more super chats. I got to share these. I got to thank these people. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Natalie, oh, thank you so much. There was another one earlier. Let me scroll by. I, I don't, I'm not trying to encourage people to donate money. I do appreciate it. Believe me. My wife... I just bought a new computer last week. It'll be here on Monday. It's going to make uh, these things so much easier for me and do so much more. She is going to die when she sees the credit card bill. Luckily, it, um, Apple has a, a zero interest thing. <laughs> Thank goodness. And it's installments. Uh, but I really appreciate these. These are great. I'm not, but I'm not trying to fish for them. I don't want to be able to think that they have to do this that. Is- but it's just a thank you. Yes, it's thank you guys so much. People. It yeah. means so much. Three of the first day ever to get some, um, which is fantastic. Yeah. And I kind of lost track of where we were. Um, so I, I we're almost out of time. Yeah, look at this. You've yeah. been a tremendous oh, yeah. help. Yay. We're so glad to hear that these are helpful, everybody. One thing I do ask everyone, share this information. Mm-hmm. There are people out there who are afraid to eat, mm-hmm. they have an appointment. They don't know what to ask their doctor. So one of the best things you could do is share. Let's get the information out there to show people living with kidney disease isn't all doom and gloom. There are, there's people here. We're here to help each other, support each other. And the more you know, the easier it is to manage living with CKD. And if you have to transition transition to dialysis, you know, there's so many more things that you wanna know and you wanna know, hey, I did the best I could. Maybe I ended up here, but that's just the way it had to be. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for all this. Wow, there's so many great yeah. things on here. <laughs> that's really wonderful. And yeah, this is definitely a really important episode to share because it's that first step. So even if you have kidney issues, it is kidney disease is genetic. It is hereditary and passed on. Mm-hmm. So sharing it on Facebook with your friends, your especially your family, to say, hey, this is really important. You guys need to be aware of this. You don't know how much lives you're saving when you just share this information oh, yeah. that empowers people. And um, I mean, that's probably one of the number one regrets I hear from people with CKD is I wish I knew sooner. You know, you can mm-hmm. never know too soon. And if you share this information and help just one more person become a better advocate for the, their own health, let's say you help somebody learn that they have stage one CKD and yep. they can reverse it and they can get right oh, back yeah. to healthy, normal kidney function. How amazing would you feel to be that person to say, I helped get you support and get you that information? Yep. So the next thing that I would ask a doctor uh, is I want to know the plan. I want to know yeah. our treatment strategy. What are we going to do? Now, we've talked about how often we get labs. It is important to be a part of that treatment strategy. And that is, I, I talk about that quite a bit in a lot of my older videos. This is my treatment strategy. My doctor laid out and we sat there, we put together an eight step program. Number one was putting together a team. Mm-hmm. Number two, stop potential or, or new damage. Get, get these things under control, blood pressure, blood sugar, all that, things that we've actually talked about today. We had an eight step strategy and we are still doing those eight steps and mm-hmm. it's still working. And there's there's nothing magical about the eight steps. It pretty much was, you know, don't miss anything. You gotta do all these things, stress, exercise, bump, 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 bump. Uh, but writing it down and knowing you're both on the same track. And then you you may have questions. Okay, I don't understand this, exercise. Mm-hmm. What, what do you mean by that doctor? And then they mm-hmm. can say, hey, here's what I need you to do. We're gonna work up to this and eventually I'm gonna get you here. And then when you kind of have a plan and you start writing it down, to me, that's when I started seeing it click with my, my healthcare team, each of them. When I wanted to know the next steps and the plan, mm-hmm. they realized, holy cow, this guy's gonna get better and I'm gonna help him get better. And they were excited. Yeah, oh, yeah. that was just so amazing to be a part of that, it really is. Yeah, instead of just being another patient, not understanding, mm-hmm. and, and it's not that we don't understand or can't understand, sometimes it's so confusing what they're talking about yeah. to us. Oh yeah. And this goes right over our heads. I would ask so many times, 
I, I don't understand this. You know, right. explain it to me differently until, and I would ask them until I understood like, okay, now I got it. And mm-hmm. we put together that plan and my plan, it, it could change. It's not going to break my heart if it changes. But for me, my plan was kind of very general. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to tackle these things. And we even had a plan with my labs. Mm -hmm. My first thing was, okay, doc. So next week, I'm going to get labs. I need my GFR to be perfect. I want a 120. What do we do? So they're like, okay, that's not possible. (laughs) Let's make some milestones. And I actually set a goal of GFR 60. Was it possible? Who knows? Chances are it's not. But I set it. That's my goal. And then we Mm -hmm. broke it up into little tiny milestones. Okay, how do I, I'm going to make this big journey. What's the first step? And then we did those things and kept moving and moving and moving towards it. And chances are I'm about as good as I will get with my kidneys. Uh, If I give up all meat, animal protein, and I go really well on my uh, plant-based diet, I think I'll get my GFR up a few more points. Maybe I could get close to a GFR 40, maybe. Um, But... I made progress. I had goals that we wrote them down. We were all focused. Everyone knew Mm -hmm. the next thing James wants to do is this. He's trying to get to this point. He's trying to get to this. And the goals were not GFR up, GFR up, GFR up. They were simple things like, like, like I mentioned earlier, I want to get all my labs within the standard range. I don't care if they're just one fraction of a point below the top, but they're within that standard range. And mm-hmm. then it was, now let's start getting them closer to the middle. Now let's get things to the middle that we can. And it just made it so much easier having that plan with detailed notes and all of us were on the same page. Mm-hmm. And what is the last question everyone should always ask their kidney doctor? And now this question applies to not even your first appointment, but every appointment. What's the oh, yeah. last question I need to always make sure I ask? So you always want to end your treatment or your uh, session with when is my next appointment and how often should I be seeing you, right? Mm -hmm. Because we talked about the lab schedule. We talked about looking at those results, but we also know how, how much should we be communicating? When, when am I going to see you again? So you can start again, setting those, those markers in place of, okay, this is my plan. This is what I'm going to be working on. And then when I see you in a month or two months or three months, whatever the case is, that's going to be like my report back date. I'm going to come to you and you're going coming back to your kidney specialist, your nephrologist, and you're going to say, this is what I've been working on. Let's take a look at the results and basically see how, see how things go. So you want to find out really what that schedule is going to look like for yourself uh, to give you that timeline of focusing on your goal, focusing on that first step of what you want to do. Yep. <laughs> We had another super chat come through. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Thank you so much, Alan. That is awesome. Um, and and Natalie, I am in the same boat as you. I need to lose weight. Weather has been hard. It's been hard to get out and walk. My steps have been way too low at the end of the night. Um, maybe we should email, set goals, support each other, and maybe do like a challenge. Um, that's actually one of the cool things oh. I've never done with anybody on here is the Apple watch challenges. I have an Apple watch. We can actually mm-hmm. set challenges with each other like mm-hmm. steps and it will track and let us know who's getting more steps per day or per week. That that's my favorite way to lose weight is yeah. getting out there and moving either steps. And, um, one other quick little weight loss thing, guys, I found us hilarious guy on YouTube. I think he calls himself the fitness marshal. He's got like, I don't know, he's on steroids or something with energy. He is like unbelievable <laughs> energy level. And that's he's, a, wait, that wait, 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 that says a lot coming from you, James. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think he's got ultra high energy and he's like <laughs> dancing and doing all these moves and stuff with these other people. And I just try to keep up. My kids are laughing so hard that they're getting exercise by watching me try to keep up with this guy doing all these popular songs. Um, and, oh, it's just hilarious. And then I end up, I'm, I'm sweating. I got my heart rate up. I lost some weight by trying to keep, I cannot do it. I'm awful, uh, but I, I love it. And he's hilarious just listening to him and watching him. And he makes comments. He's doing these yeah. like in alleys and out at parks and people are walking around looking at him and saying things. And 
<laughs> he's just maybe having a good old time. Maybe show. you got to have him come on and talk about exercise. <laughs> yeah, maybe I could. <laughs> but that's one of the things I do. You know, for those of you out there that need to lose weight, I'm in the exact same boat. They got that, what do they call it? The COVID-30? It hit me. <laughs> it hit me. And I'm working it, I'm working it down. Um, yeah, for just the snacking and all. All right, so we've gone a bit over our hour. Uh, <laughs> any last things you want to add? I'm going to ro- scroll through real quick, see if there's any questions we might be able to quickly hit uh, oh, yeah. before we sign off. Oh, someone's asking, how often do you do lives? Jen and I are here every Tuesday, and I do lives at other times. So next week, Jen and I, oh, we have a great show. On Tuesday, we are going to talk about snacks and mindful eating. You guys are going to be shocked. I'm going to share. Jen has not seen them. I'm not going to tell her what they are, but I'm going to share with you guys some of the snacks I use, and I want to get Jen's honest reaction. And it's okay, Jen, if you go like, oh, James, I don't think that's a good one. Uh, Okay. To me, the secret is portion control. So there's some things I may get, and I'll show you, okay, here's what it is. One portion is eight ounces. This little bag right here lasts me four servings, and it'll last me like a week. To, to eat this and then it's okay when you when I'm pacing it out mm-hmm. but I'm gonna share a lot of the snacks that I use that I like they're 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 all well made non-gmo they don't have extra ingredients or stuff but they're things that a lot of people would think holy cow I can't eat that how, how does that fit in a renal yeah. diet I track it I look at what's in there and I it's easy when you have portion control, Mm-hmm. to make things fit. So we got that next next Tuesday. Next Wednesday, the day right after, I've got um, a nephrologist, Dr. Butt. Again, he was here uh, last Monday. He is going to talk about dialysis and dialysis access. Um, he is a hilarious nephrologist. More energy than me. Oh, wow. Has, has videos and stuff. They're hilarious. He had some humor. He makes... All the complex, easy. He keeps it simple. He makes it relatable. So we'll have two live shows next week for those that ask about when do we do the live shows. The schedule is always on the homepage of dadvicetv.com. So you can go there and see and just Mm kind of set a uh, reminder and tune in. We're here on Facebook. We're here on uh, uh, YouTube. And we are now on Twitch. And soon, soon, we'll also be on LinkedIn. But I like YouTube because those are the metrics I like to look at. And I want to hit 100,000 subscribers. Get to that number. Oh, yeah. I feel like, get I feel that like little when plaque. you hit that, we got to do, a, yeah, we got to do like a special giveaway or something. Oh, people. yeah. Yeah. And for that those of you fun. that were asking about the giveaways from last week, we did a drawing for the book, Cook It For Your Kidneys, waiting to see if the person responds. And then the software will select somebody else if, if they don't respond. We are still giving away picking random people every single day. We're going to do 20 days straight or two weeks straight, 14 days, Mm -hmm. giving away a bottle to each of them of pro renal plus D you can pick with the mega or without a full month supply. Uh, Nephroceuticals is an awesome company and they were so helpful. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I said, Hey, would you like to do a giveaway? They said, sure. How many you want to do? And they came up with a big number. I was like, wow. I was thinking like one or two bottles. Fantastic. That's great. <laughs> uh, but let me scroll through these and see. Oh, how about giving away a kidney? Hey, Jane and Bill, you don't want my kidneys. I saw their pictures. <laughs> They're not good. <laughs> Let's see. Any any tips you want to, any last minute tips you want to add while I'm scrolling through and seeing uh, if there's any questions? Um. I don't think so. I will let everybody know that I have a blog post that is up and live on my website um, right now. And this reviews all the questions that we've talked about today. James is going to include the link in the show notes as well for you guys. Um, But you can go there, check out that blog. You can check out the past blog from last week. We talked about the labs and that's a really good one that kind of pairs with the conversation we had today so that you get a refresher on both of those. Um, Yeah. And then be sure, like we said, join the Facebook group because I am going to be doing some more cooking demos in the next couple weeks, especially because we're going to be talking about snacks next week. So I'm going to start providing you guys some other ideas of what you can do to have a kidney friendly snack. So 
get in that group. Be sure you please, please address the questions. I do not allow anybody in there that doesn't answer questions because I'm protecting people from bots. So yep. please make sure that you answer those questions. Uh, so I know you are a real human being that you are and that you can go in and get all those different ideas. People post delicious pictures of their food. You get tons of ideas and oh, recipes yeah. and it's such a supportive group. Yep. And Barbara asked, what was the name of the supplement? It is Pro Renal Plus D. This is mm -hmm. a renal multivitamin. Uh, most dietitians, especially Jen, encourage kidney patients to add this to their <laughs> diet, help them get, look at that, boom, double bottles yeah. up there. <laughs> help them get those nutrients that we need. You can't just go to the store and grab Centrum off the shelf. It's got some things we don't need mm -hmm. that can build up and cause other issues. So it's um, a local company out of Dayton that does it. I've met them at kidney walks or went back in the day when we were having all the kidney walks, I always saw them. They're fantastic people. And they, they were the ones that got us Dr. Cracker last week, a, ne a nephrologist, or Crocker, Dr. Crocker last week, a nephrologist. And he's gonna come back again. He said, hey James, he is at a hospital doing a lot with COVID. And we're going to do an episode talking about COVID and kidney disease because there are concerns. I Once the mm -hmm. show was over, him and I had a conversation about it. And I was like, hey, I'm scared to death to get it because I have kidney problems. And I, I hear it impact kidney. So we had a conversation and we said, you know, this is good information. We should share it. He said, sure, let's do it again. So Nephroceuticals, the people who make Pro Renal Plus D, they arranged to have him on last week when I did seven days of live shows. And I'll tell you guys, that was exhausting, but a ton of fun. And that was practice for an even bigger thing coming in March. And someone said, hey, James, we should do this every quarter. So I'm going to look at that, see what we can do. The American Kidney Fund reached out to me and said, hey, James, we'll help. We want to participate and be part of it. So it should be even easier in the future to do a, a whole kidney week. All right, everyone, I wanna thank you so much for your time today, for all your comments, for all the, the super chats, that was fantastic. You guys, you made my summer with those super <laughs> chats in there. Uh, oh, and someone says, how do you enter to win a free bottle? All you gotta do is there is a video uh, where we, on Facebook and on YouTube, where I interviewed Dr. Crocker and we talked about renal multivitamins, just share that and you tag it with the hashtag MyProRenal. That's all you gotta do and um, you are then entered. A random person selected every single day. The more you share, and actually you could share this one, share this one, tag it, MyProRenal with the hashtag in there and every entry, every share, is a chance to get another free bottle. They will ship it to everywhere in the world that does not have a restriction on importing of vitamins. And they're covering that shipping. So that is fantastic. Now, I don't That's want it to sound great. like this is some miracle thing. This is something that helps you with your diet. You use it mm -hmm. in conjunction mm -hmm. with eating the right diet to help you get those nutrients you need, especially vitamin D and stuff like that. All right, everybody, thank you so much. And I'll see yeah. you guys in the next video. Bye, everyone.